Welcome everyone, my name is Merv Lapus. I'm the Senior Education Program Manager for Common Sense Education. Um, today, uh, we are going to be uh, talking about best tools to spark scientific inquiry for next generation science standards in elementary school. I um, also want to note that I am graphite certified and that's, as you can see here, these products, uh, as we go forward, we're going to be referencing graphite. The products we are talking about today are going to be Curiosity Machine, Classify It, and Smithsonian Quest. Have you guys ever heard of these? No? No? Great. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about it today. I um, want you to know that we did not receive any kind of support or funding from any of these developers to talk about their tools. Really, we found them on, the, on, on our Graphite platform to just be rated best for learning in the classroom. And so that's what we brought here to share with you guys. And it's not about me going into the tools to show you them live. It's really going to be about going through use cases in the classroom. So you can take them back with you and see how you might apply them directly back with the students that you engage with daily. All right. First up is Curiosity Machine. Curiosity Machine is actually a really great engineering site uh, that allows for kids to really kind of build, share, uh, and receive pro feedback uh, with some uh, awesome tools, especially with some great connections to actual engineers and, and scientists. And it is rated for grades uh, 2 through 12. It is free, which is also always really great for the classroom. Um, and it is based, uh, it is web based. So you can, as long as you have any kind of web platform, you can access the tool. One thing to know about this site, as well as the rest of the tools that I'm going to be focusing on, when you look at these sites and how they support next generation science standards, they're not necessarily going to fulfill the standards around the next generation science standards you're going to be asked to use in the classroom. But they do allow you to really deepen and engage the way that kids apply the knowledge that you want them to come away with and really experience um, and build a bigger love for the way that they apply these types of ideas. Okay. So one of the things you can do this site does allow for students to kind of go in and do kind of their own exploration and create, um, uh, you know, a, a kind of a, their, own, their own ways to kind of dive deeper into these subjects. But if you're an educator and you want kids to kind of follow maybe some core ideas that you want them to do as a class, what you can do is say something like flight. You can say, okay, we want to address flight. And what I want you guys really to look at is think about volume, think about air pressure, think about density, things that you'd want to cover beforehand and say, but now let's apply them to something like flight. And I still want to give you some design choice. So when we click into something like flight, you now have these different design challenges that you can apply this topic to. Okay, so now it gives kids some kind of choice in how they want to apply it, but they still have to come back and really think critically about how they integrate those core ideas around again, like air pressure or distance, um, velocity, those types of ideas you might be addressing in the classroom already. Okay, so best practice, address those things first and then work with them in figuring out the design challenge um, and giving them some choice in how they want to do it and apply it. What's really great about when they kind of choose that challenge is that they're then first prompted to actually watch a video by a real scientist or in some cases or engineers and even mentors to kind of learn about, more about the problem. Um, once they do that, they then have an opportunity to kind of do a little bit more research um, and even start creating a short video or even answering some short questions about what they think they might do to address the problem and then send it out almost as a pitch and then get some feedback directly from some of those mentors that'll say, hey, you know what? We really like this idea. Think about tweaking this. Think how it might apply this way since you're trying to build in some of these core uh, topics that, you're, that your teacher is asking you to focus on. Um, and then based on that, can really kind of use this project map the same way that real scientists would use a project map to kind of explore and, and um, integrate some of their key ideas to kind of go through and, and complete that design. Now, if you're working more in formal learning settings or really right, wanting to bring in project-based learning into your classroom, uh, this is going to be this can be a really great tool for that as well. Inherently, you're already creating a project, um, but if you're looking at more PBL type classrooms, you want to bring in that rubric that maybe you use for edu for for students to kind of talk about what parts that they took, what parts of the uh, collaboration that they took part in, even constructive feedback on how they worked with each other, you would have to bring in your own rubric for that, but you can still easily apply it because a lot of what they're gonna be doing meets a lot of those standards around project-based learning. That being said, um, it's gonna be messy and it's gonna be, it's gonna require a lot of critical thinking. There's gonna require a lot of problem solving. That's what project-based learning is all about. And these types of um, projects that they'll be engaging in, they, they can get a little messy and a little sticky. So it's more than just assigning a worksheet. If you're gonna be using Curiosity Machine, you wanna make sure you're really providing some good support um, around how they engage in these design challenges. 
Lastly, one of the other use cases is if you're looking at badging and trying to really afford ways for kids to learn how to build on their own skills. You can start from really kind of stage one is just kind of a being a builder um, and then really work into an engineer and eventually an inventor when looking through these, these design challenges. And essentially that means eventually the goal is, you know, you can problem solve and you can create new solutions around the problems. So it's a great way of having kids kind of build up on that skill, especially if you are looking at leveraging badging in your classrooms. Okay. The next tool is really more of an app. So not, not a website, but an app. So this, I actually really enjoyed playing this one myself when I first learned about it because it's, it's, it's a great tool to teach kids how to classify um, living organisms. Um, it's grades four through eight, it is free and it's uh, again um, an app based so the platforms around Android, iPad, iPhone, iP iPod Touch, really iOS and Android, okay? Now one thing to note is that looking at these, um, these these natural classification systems, it's not an inherent part of nature, right? That's something that scientists and something that uh, biologists had to create to really make sense of just the, the vast amount of, um, of diversity we have with the organisms. So just giving this to a kid to play or to one of your students to play, um, if they don't have a background on what these organisms are or these classifications are, this could be a challenging app for them to play with. So best practice, Use that first. Go through what classification systems are. Really address what does it mean to be a protist versus a mammal versus a plant versus reptiles. Have that background information kind of set first and then give them this as a way to practice and really kind of do some research and see the patterns and the way that these different organisms fit these particular groups, okay? Now, another use case is to potentially, as you complete these short games, kids will then unlock these creature cards. And there's about 13 all together. Uh, there are 13 exactly all together. And what you can do is you split your kids into small groups. And when you split them into small groups, you can have them say, okay, collect all your creature cards together. And I want you to apply everything you've learned about these different classification systems and uh, put these creature cards into those classification systems. And it's a great way for kids to work collaboratively and to even maybe educate each other if there was a particular pattern they didn't yet see. But it's also really great for the teacher to really assess, did you understand what we were going through. Do you understand the various uh, classifications that we outlined in the beginning and how did you apply it? And again, really kind of using this engaging app as a way to get there, right? All right, and now the last one that we're really gonna kind of talk more in depth on is the Smithsonian's Quests. Um, this is also a great website to visit. The Smithsonian's Quest is, is really rated for fourth through 10th grade um, and it's a platform um, created by the Smithsonian Institute to really provide Smithsonian style uh, type research and application the way that you kind of extend learning, especially through next generation science standards. And what you would do is really use it as a tool to extend the learning. Um, so much like I mentioned earlier, you won't necessarily get to hit all the core aspects of what you're trying to address, but you can extend um, and dive deeper into some of these ideas. So if I were to ask anyone here, um, if you knew what I meant when I say, mother very eagerly made jelly sandwiches under no protest. Anyone raise their hands? You don't have to tell me what it is, but awesome. So we're talking about the solar system. We wanna talk about Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. I still consider Pluto a planet, though it's a dwarf planet. I'm not a scientist. They'll probably tell me I'm wrong. Um, but they were there when I learned it. So, um, but you'll learn about that first, right? Into, in your classroom, learn more about the solar system and then want to dive deeper into it really and say, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go on to Smithsonian's Quest and see how we can apply your knowledge um, around the solar system. And in this case, we're going to look at maybe astronomy and how do we apply it to the solar system? So there's a, a particular... Um, badging uh, piece here where they say you want to become an astrophotographer here's what you can do so the first badge is around taking an image so kids are actually given uh, this website that they can go on and there are these land telescopes that they can go on and control the land telescopes to shoot out into the cosmos and take pictures which is awesome they don't they don't have to go to the science center they can just go on the website shoot it up, take some pictures, and then the next badge asks them to learn to enhance photos. There's a lot of details within these photos that you can't see within the naked eye. So it'll walk you through typical ways to saturate types of photos or bring out details that maybe they didn't see. As you can imagine you can extend this into other types of um, photo editing uh, for kids moving forward. But once they see those pictures really enhanced, then it gives them an opportunity in this last badging piece to really kind of analyze and compare what they've learned. And the nice part about that is they can see what are some of the trends with galaxies, what are the trends that we see with moons and, and, uh, and stars and planets, and then that allows them to drive deeper than just the 
why did mother, you know, decide to um, provide me jelly sandwiches, right? Understanding what the planets are. And then you can do so in ways where you can kind of do it as a, um, uh, either just as a presentation in the classroom or even have kind of like a science fair where you can kind of uh, present these things out. Uh, another great thing to, to consider is just really this independent learning and experience for kids. Um, one of the great ways to spark curiosity for kids in any of these tools is just to give them the freedom to dive deep, dive deep, find things that they're interested in, um, and even more so find recognition in the way that they're doing it. And so, again, they can kind of search through all these different uh, ideas um, and then look at what it takes to receive a badge to kind of like move forward and show that they've learned this new piece. Another cool way is through conference style learning. And so a lot of folks have heard of like TED Talks or have been able to like really watch great webinars. And what they've been able to do here is find thought leaders and educators and scientists and engineers to create these webinar based type uh, learning uh, modules for kids to be able to go through. Um, and they're super engaging. Uh, they have these great infographics that help kids really see how these ideas really kind of connect with each other um, versus just kind of hearing you know, someone kind of talk um, or, or maybe even show these short videos. These images kind of stick when you get to really look at it, see how in this case Darwin connects to some of these theories of evolution. Okay, so wrapping up, um, all, everything that I talked about can be found on graphite.org. Again, graphite is a platform by Common Sense Education. Um, the whole purpose is to really help educators find the best tools, websites, games, apps for learning in the classroom. Uh, we have currently over 2,000 uh, apps and games that are being re that are reviewed on our site. Um, they're already uh, uh, there's a, there's a couple ways to discover these great tools from searching by Common Core standards, skills based standards. Um, you can also look at and see how educators have built these tools that I've talked about and actually embedded them into lesson plans they're already using in the classroom. So it's a great way of taking product to practice is really the goal of this tool, um, and which is one of the reasons why I decided to focus on use cases and not just the product itself, right? Um, there's also a really great uh, opportunity to, to kind of build it your professional learning community, um, and we've even created some new tools that help you just kind of extend your development and how you start integrating these tools more effectively into your classroom. Again, Thank you for your time. That was a lightning fast, one minute to spare. Thank you. <laughs>